Okay, good, good people groups in here. Before we fall asleep, we've got to have the last session, right? We want it. You turn on your mic. You turn your mic on. Okay. Simon says that we're ready. Simon, Simon says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I say that, it's going to go wrong. I know. Okay, ready? Ready to begin our afternoon session. How many, can we give uh, thanks to God and to the people that prepared the meal? Can we give an applause? Thank you for the team that did that. And for the snack, too. They're still outside. They're still outside. <laughs> it's okay. We did it by faith. <laughs> if they don't see us, that's okay. We know that we did it. <laughs> All right. So let us review real quick. It's just a review because I'm kind of cheating by giving them time to come in. Maybe they'll hear my voice. Maybe they won't. So question. It's a very simple question. It's a quick review. It's the mind thing. Ready? Did we do the front cover? Yes. Okay. Did we do the inside cover? Yes. Did we do page one? Yes. Did we do page two? Yes. How about page three? No. no. So we know we got to go there, but let's go to page 17. Ready? Did we go at 17? Did we do 17? Yes. How about 16? No. Oh, sorry. 17. 18. Yes. I got to know my numbers. Sorry, guys. 18, yes. 19? Yes. 20? Yes. 21? Yes. 22? Yes. So do you see how much we've covered? Oh, and by the way, if you look at the back cover, we also did session 9. Remember we did the prayer uh, chapel? The two, right? And that goes with page 8. You'll see it right quickly. You'll see it right away. So you see how much we've covered in the workbook? Now remember, Pastor Wade and Simon, these guys have got this recording going. Some of the information I give is very quick. So the idea is that you review it. And then another idea would be, if you guys want to, then you get together and review it again. Together, like four of you, three of you, four of you. And the idea simply is, what did you understand? What did I understand? How can we help each other understand this better? And it's not to cover the material. The goal today is not to cover the material. The, the material is just a tool. Our real goal is that God would stir us up to have a prayer life. Whatever that means for you. There's no like right, wrong, right or wrong way for this. It's just God help me. I want to pray. I want to pray when I'm walking, when I'm doing exercises, when I'm driving, when I'm in the motorbike. Especially praying when, when I'm in a motorbike. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, always. 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 And when I go to work, yes. I pray. Yeah. I go home from the job. I pray. pray. Yes. Pray. And then always. how did we? Why. You don't know why, but God's showing you. He's leading you. Right. Oh boy. So people. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, Pastor Wade, we need to pray when we're going to West Bali. That's an intense West Bali with the trucks and the cars and the motorbikes. That's intense. Yeah, it's intense. You cannot look up, right? No looking up. Okay, it looks like we got a good number of people. Let's go to page three. And remember, this is the last session, so we're going to go to 215. Right? Okay. 215, 230. Okay, perfect. Great. Ready, guys? Page three. Um, are we clear with the bottom of page two, the importance of prayer with Daniel? You saw that, right? And remember, Satan is not the three omnis. Only God is the three omnis. He's more powerful than Satan. And that's why I tell my boys they don't like to take me to the movies. Right, Diana? Because I always try to remember my boys when they're doing Marvel movies. And by the way, I like DC. They like Marvel. I don't know why that's going on like that. But anyway, we'll talk about it later, Chris. Okay. But here's the deal. I always tell them, 
Don't give so much credit to Satan. Because, you know, the movie's all about the dark side, right? And look, it's always dark. And then I say, but God is light. And then the boys are like, okay, Dad, you're ruining it for us, you know? And so just remind, just remember, you know, we are the light. <laughs> we are the light, right? So let us not give so much credit to Satan. That's the point. Page three. We're not going to do the whole page, but just the bottom of page three, second to last paragraph, the failure, the failure of the church. Who can read that paragraph completely for us? The failure of the church, Dave. The failure of the church is the failure of prayer. The failure of the individual Christian is the failure of prayer. Defeats, discouragements, disheartenedness, fruitlessness, coldness, even in services. In fact, there are many believers so empty, cold, and worldly that they stay away from church services. Hebrews 10.25 encourages us to assemble. Others become hypocritical and live in a negative case. They host, even doubt their salvation. The result is spiritual inertia on every hand. The wheels of Zion bog down as folks play church. The power has been absent so long that the Holy Spirit could remove himself and churches would not miss him and still continue their business as usual. What a mire of indifference and inactivity we can get ourselves in when we don't pray. So what we want to uh, go ahead and put a star or a check next to that paragraph. You need to read it again. And here is the point of the prayer seminar. We're not here to get churches to pray again like they used to. And I tell that in the U.S. That's not the goal of the prayer seminar. Okay, pastor, get this on your bulletin point again. No, that's not the goal. The goal is for us individually to get on praying ground. And then eventually, eventually, as God works in our lives and prayer life, then we can call the believers back to prayer if that's what the Lord leads. But what we want is we want sensitivity to the Holy Spirit because we each have a prayer life. That's the goal that we're looking at. So it's not just the failure of the church, but it's also the failure of the individual if we're not praying. And of course, we always encourage the leaders to pray because if the leaders start praying or encouraging prayer meetings or individual meetings one on one, then things start to happen and then people want to do what the leader is, you know, leading them to do. Make sense? Let's go to page four. Fill in the blanks. We're going to fill in the circles on page four. <clears throat> now. Let's, top of the page, it's called Throne Room Praying. To the left, I want you to write the question, what is prayer? To the left of the title, write the question, what is prayer? And then to the right of that top room, Throne Room Praying, write the words, prayer is, prayer is. So what is prayer? Throne room praying, prayer is. Who can read for us Revelations chapter 4, 1 and 2? Revelations chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. How about a person that hasn't read yet? Someone over here maybe? Revelations 4, 1 and 2. Okay, please. Very good. Thank you. Key passage. Let's answer the questions. What did John see? He saw a throne. Remember? What did John see when he went in the spirit? He would, remember, he was in exile on the island of Patmos. And he was a prisoner. And he was being persecuted because he was a believer of Christ, right? And what did he see in his old age when he got caught up in the spirit? Revelation chapter 4. He saw a throne and someone was sitting on the throne. And who is that person? Who are we calling that person? Call him God, right? 
God is sitting on the throne. What did John hear? A what? A trumpet call. What did the voice say? You're filling in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. What did the voice say? Come up here. And this has to do with prayer. When God calls us to pray, we come into his presence. The idea is to be in our minds that we be in, we're in a place of not being distracted. That's, that's the idea of this passage. Not to be distracted in our prayer time. John wasn't distracted. He suddenly was taken up in the spirit. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be distracted, right? So... What does it say? In heaven there was an occupied throne. There is a throne room. That's where the title of page four comes from. Throne room. There's a room with a throne. Someone's sitting on the throne. Someone's in charge. And then, where, next question, last question number four. Where is Jesus in the throne room? And he is at the right hand of the Father. Correct? What is Jesus doing for us right now? As right now, as we're in Bali, as we're in the prayer seminar, as we're learning tips and ideas and Holy Spirit is teaching and shaking over here, strengthening over there. What, what is Jesus doing right now? He's interceding for us, as you know, in Hebrews 7.25. So let's read the two verses of Hebrews here in our page four of the workbook. Ready? Hebrews 4.16. Let us So go ahead and circle throne of grace. What kind of throne is it? It's a grace throne. And do we need grace in our lives? For the present and for the future, we need grace. How about mercy? Mercy for our past. Isn't that amazing? God covers on the throne of uh, at that the throne, he covers our past with mercy and he's covering our present and future with grace. How about Hebrews 10:19? Ready? Yep. Having therefore <laughs> circle holiest. What kind of throne is it? It's the most holiest place, right? And, and when you see Hebrews and holiest, you know that they're talking about the holiest of holy, right? When you look at the tabernacle, because the Hebrew Jews knew about that, right? The holiest place. What is the throne of grace for us Christians? It's the holiest place. What kind of place is it for us? It's a place that we have access to, to pray to our father who's sitting on the throne. That sitting has to do with what? It has to do with authority. The work is done. The work is finished. Where is it finished? On the cross. cross. It is finished. So then there can be sitting down and there can be authority. So when we go to our God to pray, we're going to a God who has authority. Amen? Amen. So look at the circles. Let's fill them in. It has to do with the question, what is prayer? Prayer is. Ready? Now look at this question. Look at this point here. This is number one. Circle one. This is number two. This is three. And the two ellipse is four. Okay? Follow that order so we can see the order at the end. We'll need it because we're going to do something in group, community group here. Okay? Ready? So in the first circle, you're going to write... What is prayer? Prayer is to the Father. How do we know that prayer is to the Father? Because when Jesus prayed here on earth, who did he pray to? He prayed to the Father. Did he pray to the Spirit? No. He prayed to the Father. That's what he did every time he prayed. And what was another name that Jesus used for Father in the Aramaic? Abba, so write Abba there. In that circle there of the first circle. And also write page 13. Remember, I'm teaching you, but I'm really not just teaching you. I want you to multiply it. That's the whole point of the seminar. It's that you use it to teach others. 
So why do I give you the page number so you can study and then reteach it and then tell them where it's at? Keep reteaching, reteaching. And that's the idea of the prayer seminar. Let's go to circle two. After you pray, to, what is prayer? Prayer is to the Father, then through the Son. Right? What is prayer? Through the Son. Who is the Son? Jesus. And what page is it, is it going to, are you going to write there? Pages 14 and 15. Now let's go to the third circle. And the third circle is in the power of the Holy Spirit. Whose power? Holy Spirit. And then the fourth circle is <clears throat> the first ellipse. The first ellipse, petition. 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 In the second ellipse, write the word intercession. So what are we doing when we pray? When we actually pray? We pray for ourselves. Or sorry, above petition, write the phrase for myself. When I pray for myself, that's called petition prayer. When I pray for others, that's called intercession. So above intercession, write the phrase for others. Now, as you can follow in the circles, there's an order to it. There's a reason behind it. Before we go into the order, let's go back to Holy Spirit in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and write pages 15 and 16 for uh, the Holy Spirit. Remember the circle of the Holy Spirit? Pages 15 and 16. And then for, <clears throat> for, inter uh, for petition, write pages 8, 11, and 12. And then for intercession, page 29. So, ready to put it together? Let's put it all together, starting from the top. The question, ready? What is prayer? Prayer is... Keep going. Okay, everybody stand up after lunch. Stand up. And this is group A. And this is group B. Stand up with your workbook. Now look group B. Look at your group A. They're still your brothers and sisters. They're just on another team right now. And then group A. Right? So what are we going to do? Let's ask them a question. What is the question we're going to ask them? Okay. But don't ask. Let's ask them. Ready? And let's do it like in a kind way. I couldn't do it in Indonesian. Let's do it like in a Christian way. Please. Tell us, what is prayer? Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Please. Please. Tell us, what is prayer? Yes. Prayer, prayer is. is. Petition. How did they do on a scale of 1 to 10 in their harmony? Hello. <laughs> How did they do? Oh, it's lost. <laughs> All right. Let's switch it up. Let's see how you do with a question. Ready? Ready? Question. Please tell us what is prayer? Could we record a CD that way? No. 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 Right Do you understand where we're going? Yeah. Harmony, togetherness. Ready? You got it. Second time around. Ready? One, two, three. Question. Please, Please tell us what is prayer?
Yes. Watch this. Oh, I see where you're. It's yes. for myself, petition. Yes. Okay. For others, intercession. Sorry about that. Bad, bad teaching. Bad teaching. So that's where the mix-up is. We got a bad teacher here. Throw him out. Throw him out. Ready? So who's going to ask the question this time? Okay, ready? Now you're ready. Yes. Let's do this. You guys are too smart. Put the workbook on the chair. And let's do it with a memory. No looking at the workbook. Oh, don't look at the workbook to ask the question. Ready? Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Please tell us what is prayer. Self-petition for others. That was that was like a six point five out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last time. Ready? Last time. Ready? Memory. Got to get the neurons going. Ready, guys? Okay. One, two, three. Please tell us what is prayer? That's good. So they get the snack, the afternoon snack, and you guys don't. Okay. All right, ready? I go ahead, sit down. We're at the bottom of page four. You got it. And by the way, here we go. This is very practical discipleship. Right here, page four. You lead people to the Lord, and you want to help them to have an understanding of the Word of God, and a prayer life right from the beginning. Right from the get-go. Right from the go. Have a prayer life. How? Teach them how to pray. Do you see that? Right here, discipleship material for the new believers. Right? And there it is. Bottom of page four. A passage every believer should master. You guys already saw this. Remember John 13 through 17. But write it again. The upper room discourse. Last, last supper. And then there Jesus. There it is. He says it. And there it is written in the workbook. What are the two things that Jesus taught the disciples in the last supper? About the Holy Spirit how to, and prayer. How do we know and why was that important? Because the Holy Spirit hadn't arrived yet. Why didn't he arrive yet? Because Jesus was still on earth. He had to ascend. When he ascended into heaven, then the Holy Spirit came down. And then the Holy Spirit knew what it, what it was about. Who was the Holy Spirit? Prayer is the second one. Okay, we need five men. Ready? Five men. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Come on up, Cliff. Come on. Yes, look at that. Volunteer. Five, five, five. Yes, come on up. Yes, Cliff. Excellent. One more. One more. One more. How about one of these two gentlemen right there? Young guys. We need rowers. Yes, come on up. We're rowing. You guys are the disciples. You know what? Get in front of the, the, the table. Okay, you're, you're going to be on the boat. But not an Indonesian boat. We've got to get it rowing. Got a row. Can you put your workbook on there? Yeah. Everybody, now we need a Peter. Can you be Peter? Because you have a beard. <laughs> Get over in the front. Okay. Now, Peter, tell them, the disciples, how you're going to cross the Sea of Galilee because Jesus, I'm Jesus, and what, guess what you guys are? You are the Sea of Galilee. And how do you do that? Ready? Shh. Now, that. I need to see the waves. I don't see the waves. It's not happening, people. Let's go. Hands up. Waves. Yeah. Shh. Right. Now, Peter, you're in the Sea of Galilee crossing. Are you going that way or are you going this way? Which way do you want to go? 
That way, okay, perfect. Follow Peter, he's the leader. Don't go anywhere, you're in the boat. This is the boat, this is the boat, this is the ocean, okay? You guys know the story. What's up with this story? Jesus said, go to the other side in the boat, right? And start rowing, uh, disciples. Row, disciples. Row. Shh, shh. What time is it in the morning, according to the Bible? Between 3 and 6 a.m. And who's walking on the water? Jesus. Jesus. What are the disciples doing? Rowing. And what did they see? Ghost. A ghost. You uh, look like a ghost. And, and, ah, there you go. Stop rowing because you just saw a ghost. Hey, what happened to the sea? <laughs> Come on, guys. You're dying on me here. <laughs> so it goes. Yeah, they can keep them going. What happened to Peter? What did he say? I want to come out and walk on this. Come on out, Peter. And then he starts walking. What happened to the sea and ocean right here? And then, and then what happened to Peter? Go, come on, come on, go down. And then I pick you up. Come on, I pick you up. Yeah. Now. You can stop. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Where was Jesus every time the disciples needed help? He was always right there. There was no need to pray. Do you see it? Food. Here we go. Let's pray it down. Just keep praying. But where was Jesus? Next to them. Heal. Healing people. Healing. Jesus is right there. So the disciples knew nothing about prayer to the Father because Jesus was always here. So the idea of teaching on prayer, Jesus had to explain and teach it to them and get them ready. And that's why page four is important. That's why we need to study the five chapters of John to hear that conversation piece again. Look at it as a conversation. Last conversation, last orders before Jesus goes up. And then later on in Acts you see the Holy Spirit come. So, here we go. How about an applause for the disciples? They did a good job. Yep, you're done. And then how about we applaud them for ocean and sea waves? Yeah. Good job. You guys were awesome. That was all the techniques and everything. That was very, very good. That was very good. So, when you see lines in the workbook... You, for those that want to do it, you have homework. So that's the homework of the seven verses where Jesus said, you will pray in, from here on out, you'll pray in my name. And you're going to see it coming up in a couple minutes more. How about page five? Page five, general remarks about prayer. This is just a good, fun, you are in line somewhere in a cab or going on a long trip in a ferry to another island. Read this list, but just circle number six, my favorite, because that's where I feel most of the time. Number six, what does it say? So when Satan sees us praying and you don't really feel like praying or you don't feel that you can pray because you've sinned or you're weak and you're frail, Satan trembles when he sees us praying. Us weak old people. We're just weak. We got nothing to offer. Tripping, tripping over ourselves. And God is strong. We are weak. How about number 13? Ready? It is not easy to pray. It is easier to be a preacher. Or be a visitor. Why is it not easy to pray? Because Romans 8, 7 says... Remember the chair? We prefer to do our own things because we like that one word. Remember? Control. We love that word control. I want to be in control. I want to do what I want to do on my time. And I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. Right? So 13. Go ahead and circle. We're not going to read it because of time. But circle 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Just circle the number. You'll read it later for homework. And remember... Top of the page, right-hand side. Remember, maintaining a daily, consistent prayer life is hard work. That's why we didn't want you to confuse going to the church prayer meeting. 
That's not what we're talking about. Going to the church prayer meeting is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about an individual prayer life. Keeping an individual prayer life is hard work. How do we know? The flesh doesn't want to do it. Satan attracts me with other things or distracts me with other things. And the world attracts me to do other things. See what I mean? So the flesh and, the, and, and sin and Satan and the world, all of that is mixed in to keep us from praying. Because what happens when the weakest saint is on, weak, weakest sinner is on his knees? Satan trembles, right? So he doesn't want us to do the one thing that will be the power of God manifested through the church, which is to pray. And can you imagine if all of us prayed individually, had a prayer life, had a lifestyle of prayer, and then the pastor says, hey, let's do a prayer meeting. What's going to happen? It's going to be powerful. Because you already come prayed up. You're already ready. You're ready to go. Okay? That's where we want to get the church at. So let's look at page six. Summary. Middle of page six. Summary, what is prayer? Okay, right in the middle. Check mark. What is prayer? Ready? Let's read it together. Prayer is. Everyone knows. Is that true in our lives? Yes, keep reading. Let's check it out. Earthly relationships. Fill in, fill in the HW. I wanted it to be written out, but HW there is husband and wife, marriage. When there's no verbal communication, it will go wrong. Do you see the combination? Husband and wife, marriage. When there's no communication, it goes wrong. Next one, PC, parents and children. In the home, when there's no communication, verbal communication, it falls apart. How about E and E, employer, employee, right? In the business, and you know verbal communication, it goes bankrupt. How about biblical relationships, a friend talking to a friend? When I talk to my friend in Seattle, he's my mentor. He was my youth pastor, and he is still my mentor after all these years. And I say, hey, Pastor Kevin, how you doing? He goes, great. And just by my tone of voice, he can tell how I'm doing. That's how good we know each other. And same thing with me towards him. Wow. It's a friend talking to a friend. And I don't have to change my voice with him. You know how we do sometimes with people? We won't get into that. But a friend talking to a friend is prayer. How about number two, servant with a master? What's the attitude of the servant towards the master? Humble. I'm ready to do what you want me to do. I'm humble, right? And then the last one, let's have fun, some fun with this. The bride with the bridegroom. You know, Diana and I, we dated for a year and a half. We were telling Pastor Wade and Paul of this. And the, one, and the way that we were able to date, because we both had to work and, and go to school and all that, we would date over the phone. She was tired, I was tired. And it was 10 o'clock at night, Right? And we would just chit-chat, talk, chit-chat. Was it anything like really important? No, but what did we want to do? We wanted to talk. Spend time talking to each other. And then we had church service on Sunday nights. And we would always say, okay, it's our, we can go and do our date night. So we in Baltimore, we have Little Italy. Remember that? Sabatinos and... Um, ca ca Caveros or something like that? Yep. Yeah. And so we would go there late at night, but they were starting to close <laughs> Sunday night. And I said, hurry up, let's go. Let's have a date night. Let's go eat a spaghetti dinner. And what was the whole point of leaving church quickly and going down to Little Italy and then eating together? And it's 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. What's the whole point? Was to what? Spend time together. Do you understand that? What do lovers talk about? No. Anything. <laughs> okay, good. That's part of it. But if you, 
If you watch them sitting in the park bench, I don't know if they do it here in Bali, but in Cuba, where we teach and go there many times, they have plazas and people walk around in the afternoon at night. Yeah. Then they sit in the park bench and then the, 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 the boyfriend, girlfriend, they sit there and then they talk. And then one day we went to the prayer seminar at 630 and they were sitting there. And then we went, did the prayer seminar and came back and it was 10 o'clock. They were still sitting there. So you know what we said to each other in the van? What are they talking about? And it's anything. What is the point of the lover's talk? They want to be together. It's not what they talk about. It's the being together part. Right? What's that got to do with prayer? How is our prayer life? Do we look like this? Okay, God. I got 15 minutes. We're going to do this. And we're going to do it in 15 minutes. Because I got to go. So if, if we apply it to the boyfriend, girlfriend, how would the girlfriend feel if the guy said, you got 15 minutes. Tell me anything you want to say in 15 minutes. Because I got to go. How do you think she would feel? What kind of attitude is that? Like, okay, you, I really love you, but uh, I don't have time for you. Do you see how it applies in prayer? Is that if we take the time to be with God, and it's not always us talking to him. It's, always, it's also listening through the word. What does he want to say to us? Taking time to be with him is part of prayer. <clears throat> it's like lovers talk. If we're in love with God, then he can have my time. It's not always important what I'm saying to him. It's the time that I, that I spend with him and I look through the window and I said, you're a forgiving God. You're a loving God. You're a gentle God. And I love that. How many love it that God is that way? You know, he loves us, doesn't he? And so that is page six. Let's go to page seven. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Page seven, eight, and nine is, is one concept, okay? Remember the workbook is broken up in concepts and sessions. You're not trying to memorize all the material. Just understand some concepts, that's all. Page six, seven, and eight is one concept. Here's the concept. It's the three worlds of prayer. When you pray, you can only pray to one of these worlds at a time. So let's look at the first world, page six. Heaven. When I look to heaven and I see God, what is that called at the top of page six? Worship. Next to worship, write the phrase or write the number. See page 25. More references. See page 25, because you're going to want to study page 25 with, with page 7. See how it starts to come together? So when I look to heaven and I see God, that's called worship. How about page 8? <clears throat> when, when, I, when I look to earth and I see people in circumstances, what's that called? Work. It is work to intercede for other people. It's a lot of work. I love uh, Pastor Wade's office in the house. He has all these names on the whiteboard. All these names. And he's working, praying, interceding for people. You know, praying for you. It's called work. How about page 9? Our last one is page 9. Hell, right? When I look at hell and I see Satan, that's called? Warfare. Warfare. And we already saw that. Remember we saw that in Daniel. Do you see this? Do you see the hierarchy? <laughs> See the hierarchy, the steps, hierarchy above right here where it says satanic hierarchy above it, above the line, right? See page two, Daniel, see page two, Daniel, when you have the steps of the hierarchy. Yes, yeah, show her. And then right there, you're going to write a reference. What is the reference? See page two, Daniel, because page two goes with page nine. Right. So let's quickly go over the three pages or let's go over the three worlds of prayer. Ready? Page six. No, nope, page seven. We already introduced it. What's the key verse? Daniel 1132. Let's read it together. And circle know their God. What do we need to do to go into worship? We need to spend time with God, don't we? 
we need to know Him. If you don't know Him, you can't worship Him. Right? So that's the key. And when I know our God, when you know your God, when we know our God, then we will do great exploits. We'll want to work for Him. But why? Because we know who He is. He's going to be a powerful, mighty God for us. So look at this. The first paragraph after the verse. Prayer is the means whereby we can come to know God. As we talk with God, not just to Him, we will develop a warm fellowship. In fact, we can be sure that we can never know any person unless we spend time with that person. Is it true? It is true, isn't it? No other way. You have to spend time with them. And then the main thing here for this, the rest of this page is um, you'll never make God any bigger than who he is already. And we've said that several times. Bottom of page seven. Has anybody ever heard of Billy Graham? Yes. Has, anybody, any, has anybody been to the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C.? Yes. Been to the Washington the Bible Museum. So we went there the year that he died. I think it was 2019 he died. And we went to two floors. They took two floors and they did a whole display of Billy Graham's life. And they said that he had reached through the association of Billy Graham, seven million people with the gospel. Then we looked up and saw that this guy was very important in Billy Graham's life. It's this guy here on page seven, Armin Geschwein. Has anybody ever heard of him? No. Probably not because he was the prayer warrior for Billy Graham. And Billy Graham said in 1949 in Los Angeles, he said, I will begin the six week evangelistic campaign under the tents. I will do it, but only if Armin Geschwein begins the prayer meetings weeks before. What did Billy Graham say? That unless we pray, it will be no good. The evangelistic uh, crusade. So we believe and, and we hear and we saw that prayer was part of the evangelistic crusade. They would pray these areas, pray the streets, get ready the pastors and the churches to be on praying ground, to receive the people so that when the gospel is given, then they can distribute the names to the churches that were already preparing or Preparing the ground for the seed of the gospel to be placed into the hearts of the people. How many see it? This chapter, this paragraph changed Dr. Henry's life. Dr. Henry became friends. Uh, PayPal, uh, not PayPal. <laughs> writing uh, letter pal. Pen pal. Thank you. PayPal. That's too much. We're in too much 20th century. Right. <laughs> Right, you want to be. So ready, he was a pen pal. Dr. Henry met, Dr. Henry met Armin Geschwein and they became, um, became pen pals, writing to each other. And he said, we prayed and we had a prayer tent in LA to begin the campaign. Thousands were saved. And it began from there. The rest is history. So this is the paragraph that changed Dr. Henry, from being a high academic guy, teacher of teachers, a guy that did accreditation for universities, Christian universities in the U.S., and then a guy that was a pastor. He left all that. He left it all to do one thing. What is it? To teach the prayer seminar. Because he said, we the church, we have a weakness. What is the weakness in the church? We don't pray. We do everything right. We raise money like it's no tomorrow. We've got committees for every single department. And then some extras ones. And we do everything correctly. We've got all the AV, all the buildings. We've got everything down. It's like a, here's the phrase, a well-oiled machine. But, and he says it like this, we don't have prayer power. We just have human power. And that's why he gave it all up. And he went to do this for 42 years up until this year. He's been teaching the prayer seminar. And that's why we're here. 
is to share it with you, to encourage you. Let's read the bottom half of the paragraph of Armin Geschwein, Dr. Henry's friend. And he says there, too, bottom half. We are suddenly in the presence of angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we worship and adore him. Only there do we discover the wonder of worship. That worship is before work. That all his works are done in the spirit of worship. There are many churchgoers, but few worshipers because there are few prayerers. Play on words, right? It's a play on words. It's a make up, right? Why? Because we met many people come to church and they'll even worship God. But when you invite them to the prayer meeting or invite them to have a prayer life, few people do this. Armin Geschwein changed Dr. Henry's life. And that's why we're here. Page, page eight. The second er world that we, tra we pray to is what? Earth. And we're good at this because we know there's problems around us, right? There's always problems in our families, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in our countries. We went to West Bali the other day and we saw all the flooding that happened, right? And all the trees that came down and it disturbed it. It broke the bridge. Is that what it did? And so the bridge was broken to get to West Bali. So there was a problem in the country because I saw how much traffic came on that road. They had to fix that bridge quickly. But you had to see all the logs piled up. It was incredible. So we always have problems around us. What do we do? We, when we look to earth, there's people and circumstances, and that's called work. It, it's work to pray, right? It's work to get out a book like this. I got my own prayer book, right? Too many. It's too disorganized. But I got my prayer list. Names and people that give to us. Names and people that um, are in our church, name by name, right? And then I divide the names up into days of the week, right? Prayer lists, whoops, prayer lists. The more I have it written down or in, there's only one little issue about having everything in the phone, ready? What happens if you're praying? You get distracted by what? A text. Someone sending an emoji. And you look at it. And you're like, oh. And now we're distracted. So guys have told us, uh, people have suggested, that they don't use their phone. Matter of fact, their phone is far away from them during their prayer time. Prayer lists. Whatever, however you want to do it. Right? And you start doing prayer lists. You'll see this at the end of page 29. Then we can be focused on prayer at that time. It's hard work to pray. We already know it is, right? So, so that is... Oh, go ahead and take a look at Dr. Henry just a couple of weeks ago. You can pass that around. Just start passing it around. I fell out of it. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. So, where are we? Page 8. Ready? Let's read John 14, 12 to 14. Let's read it. Together. Verily, verily. All right. So what did Jesus say to the disciples in the Last Supper? Greater works than these. How will they accomplish the greater works? Because I go to my Father and whatsoever you ask in my name. Do you see the circles happening from page four? Whatever you ask in my name. What is prayer? Prayer is to the Father through the Son. Do you see it? In my name that I will do that the Father may be. Lord. Remember me asking my children about why do you want to work? Why do you want money? Why, remember that? It's so that my Father will be glorified. Anything that you're asking in my name to the Father, it's so that my Father will be glorified. That's amazing. Greater works will you do then when all this is happening. So look at this. Um, uh, let's read the under suffix. Let's read. Right there for, for prefix, you can just put beginning, 
and then suffix is end. And basically what we're saying is prayer is not at the beginning of the church service or at the end of the church service, right? Prayer is a lifestyle of prayer. So let's read together the sovereign God. Ready? The sovereign God... Right? Who said that? John Wesley. You see at the bottom there, the great men of God, John Wesley. Dr. Henry was able to go to his house in England and he visited Wesley's house and the tour guy said, hey, do you want to go to see Wesley's uh, bedroom? And he said, yes. So he and Miss Sue went upstairs to the bedroom and John Wesley had a bed and a table and a chair. And it was, you know, the wooden planks, right? From the 1700s. He says, do you see anything strange here? He goes, no. Nope. Nothing strange. He goes, go around the bed. So he ran around the bed. And there were two holes next to the, next to the bed that were formed by his knees. Of all the prayer that John Wesley did. So Wesley was a praying man, wasn't he? He formed those holes into the wood. Because he spent time in prayer. Right? And so, um, and for those that live in the mid-Atlantic region in Maryland, right? And Pennsylvania, Virginia, he went horseback riding 250,000 miles on horseback to establish Methodist chapels and churches in the mid-Atlantic region. How did he do it? Praying and the Word of God. John Wesley. How about Charles Spurgeon? How many uh, Englishmen know about him? In the London, the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London, England. He would preach there. And he would preach to thousands without microphone. Be like an echo shell behind him. And he'd preach. People would hear him preach. And people come from all over the world. Um, I didn't know this, but while Spurgeon preached, there were reporters from London Times there. And they were reporting and taking down the notes for the messages. And then they would go and they would put it into the newspaper for the next day. So people would read Spurgeon's messages the next day. Where would those newspapers go to? On the ships. And they would go all over to the colonies, the English colonies. And that's how they got to know about Charles Spurgeon all over the world. And then they would come and say, Spurgeon, what is your secret? Why do people keep coming to the Metropolitan Tabernacle? And he says, do you really want to know? And he took them down to the basement. And he said, while I'm preaching in the auditorium, there's 400 intercessors praying for me while I preach. 400 people. And there was a testimony that they went in while they were praying, while he was preaching, while they were praying all at the same time. And they said when they were praying, it was like a buzzing sound, like bees, right? And Lord God, minister to the hearts and souls of the people right now. Lord, we pray and yes, God, Lord, we believe it. And what are they doing? Like Matthew says, they were in agreement with the prayers. There was agreement going on in prayer. And there was building each other up in prayer. And we agree with you. And we believe it. And yes, God. And it was buzzes like bees going on. And then there was the power of God in the auditorium. That was the secret. Amazing, right? So right here in the open space, in this open space, write this phrase for the prayer work. Ready? Let's write this phrase down. Ready? It is. Prayer is the work. That comes before any other work. Prayer is the work. The great men of God knew it. Prayer is the work. Right here. Prayer is the work that comes before any other work. When we do the prayer work, then God will do His work to show up. Amen? Okay, what did Oswald Chambers say about prayer? Let's read it together. Pray, uh, Chambers, what did he say? Prayer does not fit us for greater works. Hudson Taylor said, he said, um, don't have your concert and tune your instruments. What do all musicians do? They tune their instruments and then have the concert. Right? What does that mean for us, the Christians? Let us do the prayer work first 
before we do the ministry. Amen? Just like musicians tune up before they do the concert. Very good. How many see the chapel? The prayer chapel at the bottom of page 8? We already saw that. Check, 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 right? Page 9. Page 9. Let's look at hell, right? Hell. Satan. When I look at hell and I see Satan, what is that called? Warfare. Write the verses above the words. Ready? Above hell, write the word 1 John 4.4. 4. Above hell, write the word 1 John 4.4. 4. Page 9. Right above Satan, uh, Ephesians 4.27. Above the word Satan, Ephesians 4.27. And above warfare, write the word James 4.7. Ready? When we look at, look at the key truth, I will never win the war if I don't know where the battle is being fought. If I'm in this corner and the battle's in that corner, will I win the war? The answer? No. We must engage the enemy. How do we Christians engage the enemy? Well, first, what do we do? We put on the armor. How many remember the armor? Yep. I'm not going to teach the armor because you probably heard it many times. So here's the armor right here. The Christian, uh, the Christian soldier. I just want you to circle helmet of salvation. Circle the helmet. And right next to it, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Circle the helmet. Helmet, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And what does that say? That we must, what? Present ourselves as a living sacrifice, right? Do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. That's the helmet. So we're protecting our mind. Why are we protecting our mind? Because that's where God renews us through the word of God. How about the next one? Circle the sword. Why the sword in the armor? Because it has to do with offensive. You're on the offense. All of the armor is defense except the sword. Ready? Romans 10.17. Romans 10.17 for the sword. What is that? That is faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Word of God. And when it says Word of God in that verse, 1017, it's the word Rima. Can you write that word next to Romans 1017? Rima. R H E M A. And what is that? Specific sayings from the Word of God. Ready? Example Jesus in the desert. What happened to Jesus in the desert? He was tempted three times. Who tempted him? How did Jesus respond to the temptation? It is written. And did Jesus quote the whole Torah? No. What did he quote? Phrases. Phrases from the word of God. For the first one. Just the first one. If you are the son of God, then convert these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by Every word of God from Deuteronomy. He didn't quote the whole book. He quoted a phrase. So what is the word of God for us? Raise your hands. Ready? Hear it. Ready? Hear the word of God. Read the word of God. Apply. How are we going to apply it here in the warfare? As I do all this with the word of God, the sayings from the word of God will be a rima through the Holy Spirit, the moment that Satan is tempting us or we're in the warfare. Does that make sense? Who's going to help us? The Holy Spirit. Amazing. So what do we want in our armory? We want many swords in our armory. Many swords. That's why we meditate. That's why we memorize. Then it's ready to go. And who does it? Who takes out the sword? The Holy Spirit. And it's ready to go against the enemy. All right, so look to, the, look to your left. Satanic hierarchy of organization. We talked about Satan already. Daniel, uh, see page two. Daniel, who's the commander-in-chief? Satan. Satan. Who's under him? 
And then under them? And then under them? And so, do you remember the, uh, page two? Satan is highly organized. Remember, Satan is not omniscient, omnipresent, or omnipotent. But he is highly... Here's the organization of Satan. He is highly organized. We must know who our enemy is. Let's go right into the verses. Uh, Ephesians 6.10 in the middle of page 9. Be strong in the Lord. Finish it out. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Whose might? His. Look at the word dunamis three times. Ready? Strong, power, and might. Three words in one sentence of power. And it's not ours. Eleven, wiles or strategies, right? Satan has strategies for Balinese and Indonesia. Different than for Europeans and for North Americans. It's just different. How do we know? How do we know this? Because jokes don't always translate. Right? We were talking about Jimmy Carter the other day going to Korea. And the translator said, laugh when I raise my hand because he's saying a joke in, in English and it won't translate. So he said it. Jimmy Carter said the joke. The Korean went like this and everybody went, oh, they laughed. So how do we know that Satan has a strategy? How do we know that these strategies are different for different people groups? Because he has to come up with different strategies to tempt and to lure and to get us to take our eyes off of Jesus. Right? So there's different strategies. How about verse 12? Spiritual hierarchy. We don't have to repeat it. We just did it again. So that's verse 12 is a spiritual hierarchy. 13 through 17. Put on the whole armor Who's um, is our response? Right. Put on the whole armor is our responsibility. Who's responsible for putting on the armor? We are. What part? Keep reading. What part of the Roman soldier is not protected? His back. Correct. Very good. Yes, that's right. Hey, hey, brother. Um, Alan, could you come here? And we want to use you as an example. Stand in front of me. And then he's a Roman soldier and I'm a Roman soldier. Don't touch his back. And then... <laughs> and how were the Roman soldiers? How were they uh, formed when they went to war? They went out to war. How were they? They were behind each other marching. And they were doing what? They were protecting each other's back. Do you remember when they formed together? They'd form a wall. Right? And they would do this thing with a shield. And the shield above, shield in front. And they became a wall. But what was the main thing? They knew how to march and stay together. Before the enemy came, the enemy's watching this regimental, organized, tactical format. Even that would be like, you know, intimidating. So I am going to protect my partner's back. How do we protect each other's back? By praying for each other. When we pray for each other, like the list I was showing you, then we protect each other's back. And we don't necessarily have to be there physically with them. It's just that as God puts you on, my, on your heart, I'm, I'm going through the day doing errands, working, and then God puts Alan, Alan, right? Alan on my mind, in my mind, and then I pray for him. What am I doing? I got his back. Covering his back. And then what happens when we pray for each other? We got this thing going on. Unity. Strength. Let's step, step forward. We step forward together. We move forward together. Do you see this? Now there's unity. Now there's what? Power. There's strength. Something's happening. God does it. How does he do it? Through prayer. How is it through prayer? When I, I got his back. I got your back. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so that's where we're, that's how we're being practical with prayer using the Roman soldier. And so what is the first activity of the Roman soldier? What is the first activity of Ephesians 6.18? Sorry. Who can read it for us? First activity after you've put on the armor. Pray. 
prayer. Can you read it? Please. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. How many times does all repeat itself? Four times. Pray for all people everywhere at all times. So what is the first activity for the Christian after you put on the Christian armor? Oh, I get it. We go to the beach. <laughs> I know we do. We're going to go up to, you know, the, the mountains. Ubud. Ubud. What is the first activity? The Bible says it. Prayer. Pray. That's why we put on the armor. Why? Look at Daniel. What was the activity of Daniel? Prayer. What did prayer bring on? The spiritual warfare. Do you see how it connects? Amazing, isn't it? Page 10. Okay, we're not going to do this, but circle it, and then you'll know to look for it later. Page 10, letter D. Jack Taylor's seven points of perspective. Do you see it? Page 10. Seven points of perspective. Circle. Circle one. Do you see the seven points, letter D? Circle one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yes, let's circle number one. And what we'll probably do is just read number one. Ready? No believer's spiritual life. And now read together number seven. The only way. That's interesting. Right? So page 10. That was 10. You can read page 11 now. Page 11. Page 11 talks about Bible's examples of prayers. One is the Old Testament in page 11 and 12. And the next one's in New Testament, page 13. Let's look at the top where it says note. Ready? Let's read. God's Middle of the page, Bible examples of prayers. Ready? 650 recorded prayers in the Bible. Other than the Psalms, 450 have recorded answers. And here's our point. What are the answers? That's why we want to encourage you to get into the Word of God. Remember I gave you the example of Nehemiah? What happened? How did it go with Nehemiah? What was the conversation like with God? See what I mean? That's why we want to get into it. What were the answers? Yes? No? Wait. Wait. So this is why we want us into the Word of God. Because in the Word of God will help us to even pray sometimes. I pray the prayers of those people. I just pray them right from the Bible. For some reason, they're inspired and they've been lasting all these years. Right? It's not like poetry. It's the Word of God. So look at Jabez at the bottom of page 11. Jabez, an example of prayer. How many have, re have ever re read the prayer of Jabez by Bruce Wilkinson? Have you read it? He was Dr. Henry's friend. They both studied in the same university, Northeastern University in New Jersey. And they've talked about this, right? So ready? Let's read about Jabez. And Jabez... Excellent. Excellent. Look at the introduction. 500 names in First Chronicles 1 through 9. No explanations except Jabez's name. Had to be explained. 80 words or less. Look at page number 11, the bottom question, number, th number 1. If God listed our names, would he need to explain any of us, who we are? 
What kind of Christian life do we have? That's a question. Page 12. Observe the prominence of that described him. He was more honorable than his brethren. Why was he honorable? Because he prayed. Look at the question too. What if no one else is interested in prayer? Would I be? Remember the logo? Logo, how many people does God need? One. Could I be that one? That's what we're challenging people today, right? And then C, observe the pain. His name, Jabez, stands for what? Pain. What if there's pain involved in our prayer? Right now, I've been praying for my friend Leslie. He's in Panama, and his precious wife, who are founders of our church in Caracas, Venezuela, just found out she has cancer, and she's 52. And so he wrote me this morning. I wrote him last night, and I said, I'm praying for you right now. And then he goes, I am, like, I'm just sad. I'm done. And so... We're trying to communicate with him and talk to him. But I've been praying for him, but it involves pain. It's hard to see our people go through, you know, sickness. all this sickness, right? So what if there's pain involved? Would we do it? Or do just, we just want the happy-go-lucky prayers, right? So look at the page 12, bottom, middle of the page, number one. What does it say? Oh, what did Jabez say? Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. What kind of blessing did he want? A big blessing or a small one? Big. Go ahead. Right there. Wants a big blessing. Jabez said, oh, that you would bless me indeed. How about two? And enlarge my coast. What's he asking for? More responsibility. Isn't it true? When you go from an apartment to a house to a farm... It just gets more responsibility, right? And then, how about number three, and that thy hand might be with me. How many want the hand of God with you all day long? Yes. yes. How about number four, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. How many want that? Personal prayer. Prayer petition from God. And then what did God do at the end? God granted his request. Ready, everybody? Uh, stand up and leave your workbook on your chair. Let's do some stretching. Because this, this is the final stretch. Because this is the tough time for everybody that has eaten a lot of rice. Yeah. The backs. All right. So stretch. Oh, boy. I can feel it. Good stretch. Just a couple more minutes, guys, and then we'll be done. Yep. Very good. How about swimming? We have, um, what's his name? Michael Phelps in Baltimore, right? So he was a swimmer. He's still there. He moved to Arizona. How many are moving your arms, breathing, right? Get that arm action. How about backstroke? Backstroke. Right. Okay. Ready? Now, how do roosters crow in Balinese? Yeah, I need to hear it. Oh, yes. Right? How do roosters crow? How do roosters crow in America? Cock a doo doo doo, right? How do roosters crow? My wife's not here. How do roosters crow in Venezuela? Kitty key. I'm losing my voice. Ready? So we're going to do rooster crow. Ready? Left foot in front, right foot in the back. And this is our wing. It's not an arm, it's a wing. Right? And this is another wing. And then what are you going to do? You're going to bend that knee forward and then stretch. Pull back and stretch. Yep. Can you feel it? A little bit. Now turn it over. Right foot forward, left foot back. Put your wing up. And then the wing back. And now watch this. As you stretch forward, then start, uh, what is it? Crowing. 
like a rooster in Balinese. Ready? There it is. That's the rooster crow. Now we're roosters, there we go. All right, go ahead and take a seat. Now, these are three pages that talk about, and then you'll see, and then we're going to be done. We're going to finish up with Jesus, 13, 14, and 15, very quickly. It's a couple of minutes, and then you know we're going to go from there, right? We'll have to go all the way to page 23 and finish this, the seminar. 23 to 29, and we're done. But you'll see how quickly that goes, because we already did all the hard work. Okay, ready? So let's go into Jesus, page 13. Now remember, the workbook is divided up in sessions. So who are we talking about? We're talking about Bible examples of prayer. Who was our example 11 and 12? Jabez. What book is that in? Uh, not that book, but where is he found? In the Old Testament. Now we're going to the New Testament. Who's our example? Jesus. The best example is Jesus. Jesus. Prayer, a top priority for Jesus. How did we know that prayer was a top priority for Jesus? How do we know this? Let's look at number one. Because of Christ's example. Look at the, the water drop with the number 21. Go ahead and write next to it. 21 times G we find Jesus praying. 21 times in the gospel we find Jesus praying. He didn't talk about it. He didn't teach prayer seminars on it. He did it. 21 times. And the three examples are right there. Three out of 21. So three, 21. Now, the next, number two, what was, what was Christ's expectation to the disciples? Not if you prayed, but when you prayed. Meaning, his expectation was what? That we would pray. Yes. Number three, Christ's explanation. Sermon on the Mount. 10% of the Sermon on the Mount is how to and how not to pray. 10%. Number three, uh, sorry, B, model prayer. How many know the Our, our Father? Yeah. Right? Our Father who art in heaven, right? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those. Yes. Arthur, could you come up? And could you, um, how about you, Chris, right? Come on up. Arthur and Chris, come on up front. Arthur's going to represent God. And Chris, Chris, over here, Chris is going to represent us, the church. Okay? Heaven, earth. Ready? We're not going to say it again because that was a lot of words. Ready? Sit, uh, say next to him. Get next to him. You're the earth. You're, on, you're the church on earth. You're God in heaven. So if you think through the model prayer, we're looking at God and look at the pronouns. You see the pronouns? Hallowed be thy name. Your, your kingdom come. What else? Your will be done. What else? On earth as it is in heaven. And then we switch. Where? Church. Give us this day. What else? Our daily prayer. Our. Our daily prayer. What else? Us. And what else? Others. Right. Now, here's the example. This is the, a tip to help us in prayer to see how do, where do we spend our time in prayer using the Lord's, uh, the model prayer. Do I spend time here with the Father or do I spend more time here with us and our stuff? So am I seeking his face, worshiping him and asking for, you know, a blessing his name? And do I do I ask him to guide us and direct us? Do I spend time here or do I spend time here? Chris is a little bit honest, isn't he? Where do we spend most of our time in prayer when we're praying? Is it more our stuff, us and ours? Yes. It sure is. 
So here's the tip. Here's the tip. God said yes. Yeah, he took care. He took care of business. So what is the tip? What if we spent more time with the Father? Will he take care of our stuff and our needs? So he's inviting us in the model prayer to, to, to put him first. And he is first in the model prayer, isn't he? Hallowed be your name. So the goal really is to spend time with the Father. What happens when we spend time in this relationship? The us and our stuff will then somehow, we're going to have to get in the car and put the nuts and bolts on things. I know that. Believe me, all we missionaries do, we get in line, look for visas and fix things. But God will take care of these other things as we seek his kingdom first. Amen? Amen. That's just a tip that Dr. Henry gives. So thank you, God. And thank you, church. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, let us continue. <laughs> let us continue. Ready? Parables. Letter C. This is key. I won't get into the parable because of time, but look at the letter C. You know the, the parable. Shamelessly, right? The, man, the, the, the friend at midnight. And what did the friend do at midnight? And he didn't stop knocking until what? Gave him the bread. Get away. And he left. How are we in prayer? Are we persistent? Do we ask specifically? And then are we shamelessly knocking at all hours of the day and night? But look at the other number 21 water drop. Do you see it? The water drop 21 right there. 21 times Jesus is teaching on prayer. So the two water drops, two 21s, 21 times the first one, Jesus is praying. So he's actually the example. And then 21 times in the New Testament Gospels, Jesus teaches on prayer. One example, the parable. Good? Okay, that's page 13. I'd spend more time, but I... I, oh, well, you can look at the bottom of page 13. Jesus praying for us now. We saw this. And how about John 14, 16? Um, who's praying for us? Pray is ask. God's hand to move. Remember that? And it's what? Paraclete. Under John 14, 16, where was Jesus? He was on earth. Write the word earth. Under John 14, 16. Do you see that? Yes, earth. Yep. Do you see that? Earth. And then the next point, oh yes, then the next point, number two, heaven. Where's Jesus? Heaven. Number three, heaven. Number four, heaven. And number five, heaven. Where is the Holy Spirit? He's here on earth. How do we know this? Because he's helping us. He's comforting us, counseling us. He's helping us. Earth. He's called the paraclete. Now, look at number, number four, 1 John 2, 1. Little children, these things I write unto you that you will sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate in heaven who will defend us. Who is the advocate in heaven? Jesus. But look what the advocate is called in the Greek. The word advocate is called paraclete. So watch this combination. We have a paraclete in heaven defending us against Satan's accusations. And then we have a paraclete on the inside comforting us, guiding us, and helping us here on earth. Is that an amazing comfort? We have a combo. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Page 15. Well, page 15 and 16 go together. Yes, uh-huh. Pa sorry, sorry, sorry. You're correct. 14 and 15. I was wrong. Yep. Page 14 and 15. Praying in the name of Jesus. How many remember the four circles? Ready? What is prayer? Prayer is to the Father. Two pages to read. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. I was in interrupting. Yeah. What is prayer? Prayer is to the Father through the Son right here. Pages 14 and 15. I'm leaving you with homework because I want to finish on time. And you'll see it's in his name. And look at page 15, top of page 15. In his name. 
in the power, in my name, in Jesus' name, in His name. And if you look at page 15 towards the bottom, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Do you see that? He is our great high priest. Amen? Amen. Check that. Check it. Mark it. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Yes, right there. Excellent. Now, he is the great high priest. Now, let's look at page 16. Page 16. Holy Spirit. We already introduced it, but we'll, we'll close it out here. Ready? Let's read together Romans 8, 26 about the Holy Spirit in prayer. Ready? Together. Likewise. Cannot be uttered. Can, stop, stop reading there. Cannot be uttered. Circle infirmities. Circle the word infirmities. What is infirmities for us? Weakness. Circle the word intercessor. Intercessor. Oh, sorry. Yes, intercession. And then circle the word uh, the groanings. Groanings. That cannot be uttered. Circle that phrase. So what is our weakness? We don't know what to pray for. Right? All of us. We find a situation. We're in a situation. We don't know how to pray. But then we have an, uh, the spirit that makes intercession. What does he do? He intercedes for whom? For us. What are we doing? We are doing what? Groanings that we cannot utter, right? How does, the, how does God our Father understand our, our prayer, our groanings? We have an interpreter. The interpreter is whom? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit interprets our groanings that cannot be uttered. To whom? To the Father. And He understands it perfectly. And all we do is like this. Man, why did that happen? We're like, that's our prayer, right? <laughs> that's the best we can do because we're very weak. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. That's the best we can do in those moments. But we have an interpreter, don't we? Dr. Henry goes to Latin America. He'll call me from Caracas. I'll fly into the city and we do the prayer seminar. And then we're done. And then he flies out. I go back to my home. What was I doing for him? Interpreting. Interpreting in, from English to Spanish. The prayer seminar. Amen? Amen? Look at Jesus. What did Jesus do? Keep reading now. And he that searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the word, will of God. Amazing. What does it say? Amazing. The very moment. Excellent. It sounds like they need a coffee break. They're, yep. Winding down. Battery. Battery check. <laughs> All right. Now page 23 to finish the prayer seminar. And it's going to be quick. So page 23 ACTS, personal praying. Remember the five elements of prayer? Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, seeking for self, petition, seeking for others, intercession. A, adoration. C, confession. T, thanksgiving. S are the two points. Seeking for self and others. So, do you want your church to, to grow? How many want their church to grow? What were the five things that the early church did? Their five emphases. What was it? Number one? Word of God. Number two? And go ahead and write page 21 and 22. Next to number two. Where it says spirit filled. 21, 22. Number three. What did they emphasize? Prayer. Number four? Witnessing. 
Number five, and don't just put money, put gifts of the Holy Spirit and time. Time is a gift and money. So three things that we are stewards of. The gifts that God gives us, the time that we use, and then money. So let us pray. The main thing to keep, what is the main thing? Here we go, ready? Everybody. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. What are we talking about today? Prayer. Keep prayer the main thing. Ready? Priority, discipline in our lives. Be one, bottom of page 23. Establish a time to meet God. Everybody met Dr. Henry? You saw him on the page? He gets up at 3.30 in the morning every day. But he does go to bed at 8.39. He can't live in Venezuela or in Latin America. Because we all, we do birthday parties on Tuesday nights starting at 9.30. And you get invited at 9.30. Come at 9.30. Can we come at 8? No, 9.30. And we're going to have a birthday cake. And then we're yelling and screaming, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. He could never come to our parties because he'd always be sleeping. <laughs> By the way, he did. That was, he, was, he slept. But he was up at 3.30, 4 in the morning every day. It didn't matter what city we were in. So he would pray and he would spend his time, establish a time to meet the Lord. What am I telling you? I don't do 3.30. I do 6 in the morning. At least I get up at that time. I may not be praying, but I'm up. And then you establish your time. What's good for you? Oh, and I'm careful here. You know why? Doctors and nurses corrected me on this one. We start our third shift at 11 o'clock at night. So we, you know when they do their prayer time? At 10 before they go into the shift. That's interesting. It's different. It doesn't matter the time. What matters is that we do it. Right? So B1, B2. Establish, bottom of page, establish a place to meet the Lord. How many remember the movie, The War Room? Remember the lady in the war room? Yeah. Where did she pray in? Her closet. Why the closet? Because it helped her to focus. I am praying. I am interceding. Not look at my phone, not washing dishes or, you know, doing other things. What am I doing? Praying. Page 24. Affirm God's presence. Affirm God's presence. Write this next to that title. Prepare your mind. What am I going to do? I'm going to pray. I'm going to prepare my mind. And look at the verses that we're giving you. Dr. Henry is. With empty space for you to go over those verses to prepare your mind. I'm not going to do it now because you know them already. But prepare your mind with these verses. Still that soul. What do we get going in the morning? We got like five things to do already. Ten things to do already. We haven't even left the house. And it's, it's screaming at us. What do we need to do first? Quiet the soul down. We're going to spend our time with God. Amen? What did Moses do? Look at the middle of page 24. Take off your shoes, Moses. Because you're on holy ground. It's an attitude, isn't it? It's our holy ground time with the Lord. Page 25. Adore Him. Page 25. Top of page. Adore Him. That's the A from A-C-T-S. Adore Him. Next to that, write page 7. See page 7. And then what is praise? Praise God for who He is. Seek His face. You'll never make God any bigger than what he is already. Right? Remember that? Now, for, for those that have the English program, a workbook, how, how about using the alphabet to help you praise him? And I'm starting to do that more and more. I'm finding adjectives that describe God's character and nature using the A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. That helps you to focus your prayer time, praise time. How about using the names of God? How about us, uh, you know, for me as a missionary in Venezuela uh, with no food, and, and we still don't have water, by the way. We only get water uh, two and a half days a week. And so Jehovah Jireh, who is he? God who provides. We've watched God provide many times, right? So use the names of God. Use the alphabet to describe him. Ways to worship him. Page 25. 
Page 26. Confession. Remember confession? And under confession, write. See pages 21 and 22. See pages 21 and 22. Remember we did those pages? Yep. And then the rest of page 26 is homework. You may not like that, but that helps us to get you to go look at it. Maybe. Page 26. Page 27, Thanksgiving. Remember A-C-T-S? Adoration. C, Confession. T, Thanksgiving. Should we talk about Thanksgiving? We shouldn't, but we have to. Look at Luke 17, 17. What did Jesus say? How many came back to give him thanks? One. And, and who was he? He was a Samaritan. <laughs> Not even the Jews came back to give him thanks. Hey, appreciate Nothing. Nothing. So maybe we want to make sure that we don't have that ingratitude for all the many gifts that God gives us. Look at the verses that talk about Thanksgiving. Look at the bottom of the page left side, A through P, the letter P. Look at, you could use that as a list to begin your Thanksgiving time in your prayer time for creation. Not hard to do that in Bali. It's quite beautiful. Privilege of being alive in God's beautiful world and so forth and so on. Following that list, come up with your own list and look at Dr. Henry did. You need to complete the alphabet. <laughs> it's for you to complete it. Now look at the right hand side, practical ideas. Number one, physical. How many are thankful for um, their, their body, physical body, that we're alive? Right? Thank God for, you know, that you are alive. Two, material. How many are thankful for what you have? How many are thankful for what you don't have? That's a gift too, isn't it? Right? Three. How many are thankful for uh, spiritual understanding? How many are thankful we understand something at least? Not all. Something. Yeah. Four. People. How many are thankful for one person a day? Grab one person and thank God for that person every day. A different person. Practical. Right? And then what's the end? Bottom of page 27. I have a headache. But praise the Lord, I still have a head to ache. He is dry sense of humor. Page 28. Page 28. Petition prayer. Under petition write. See pages 11 and 12. See pages 11 and 12. Do you see page 28? Under seeking for self petition, yeah, uh -huh. right. See page eleven and twelve. Amen. And this is homework for you. Page twenty-eight. We already went over it in eleven and twelve. Page twenty-nine, last page of the seminar, and we are we're done, so that you can be dismissed and you can like faint if you want to. <laughs> All right. So ready? Intercession. Seeking for others. Intercession. Number one. Fundamental principle. Intercession. Read the, read the definition. Focus. And look at this. Look at this. Uh, how to begin. Start with a prayer list. Be definite, be, def, be definite and systematic. And write this phrase. No prayer list. No prayer life. In the open space, no prayer list, no prayer life. Meaning, if we don't have prayer lists written down somewhere, it'll be hard to remember what we're going to pray for. What happens to us? We're on the street. We meet the person. Pray for me. We say yes. We get home. We forgot what they asked us to pray for. Right? So prayer list, prayer life. Right? Organize your praying according to the days of the week. What is the first day? Daily. What's it say? Everybody read. Daily. Daily. Family. Very good. How about for Sunday? How about Monday? Yep. 
Yes, and you see the numbers again. We saw them already from page two. Um, how about Tuesday? Teachers. Yeah, how many hours do the children spend with the, with the teachers? Up to six hours a day. Up to six. It could be more. But up to six. We're doing prayer walks now around elementary schools, middle schools, and, you, and high schools. Why? Because we're praying for the teachers and the kids. Yeah. It's, it's intentional, by the way. Very, very intentional. And then how about uh, Wednesday? Who are you praying for? And what else? White House, and then this government here, right? Yeah. Switch it for your government. Switch it. Right? That's right. And then how about Thursday? For troubled people. How many people know uh, uh, emotionally troubled people? <laughs> Men no, you don't have to raise your hand. Just mentally troubled people, right? <laughs> no, we were trying to... <laughs> I can tell we're tired. <laughs> I can tell we're tired. There we go. And how about Friday? Who are we praying for? Friends and family who you're not prayed for daily. And then Saturday, sinners and seekers. A friend of mine from, uh, from elementary school, from elementary school, fifth grade, he found me on uh, Messenger during the pandemic. And after 45 years, we reconnected. And we're having dinner and lunch. He's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm a missionary. He goes, what is that? What do you do? Are you a priest? Because we went to Catholic school together. And then we start talking about it and sharing and talking. Now we're, and I'm praying for Robert, praying for Robert to receive Jesus. He invited me to his house for the first time to have dinner. And I, I was a little bit embarrassed. I didn't want to pray. I'm telling the truth. And I was getting ready to eat. And he goes, before we eat, could we pray? <laughs> God just like, oh man, let's hold hands. <laughs> and we did, and he prayed. I don't know. It's happening. So on Saturdays, I'm praying for Robert, right? And then let's finish up with pray for the person by name. I'm praying for Robert. See, I just added his name. My fifth grade friend. And then is number one, what is it? God's will is for each person to be saved. For Robert to be saved. See that? Make it personal. Number two, Satan has blinded Robert's mind. Number three, pray for conviction in Robert's heart. Number four, pray for labor to share the gospel. It may be me, by the way. Maybe not, but maybe. I'll just keep going to his house to eat. Number five, <laughs> five, pray for a decision. Do we want him to make a decision then at that moment? Yes. So I am done with the prayer seminar. It is 2.35 and praise the Lord. And you're, you're probably thinking what happened to Dr. Henry when he finished the prayer seminar and me, like this voice, you probably don't want to hear my voice again. And you're saying like, oh my goodness, I hope he's done, done. No. But there was this guy, he was invited to the church to preach. And um, they called the meeting to, to a beginning with a gavel. You know, the hammer hit, hit the pulpit, right? And the hammer, okay, let's begin the meeting. This guy's going to come and preach to us. And he started preaching and preaching and preaching, and he never finished preaching, like hour and 10 minutes into the preaching. And the guy that was in charge sitting behind him had the hammer. And he was so tired of hearing this guy preaching, he was trying to throw the hammer to hit him in the back so he would stop preaching, right? Well, guess what? He threw the hammer and it went past the preacher and hit the lady in the head in the front row. And she fell forward on the, on the floor. And everybody came running to her to make sure she's okay. Ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? She goes, hit me again. I can still hear his voice. I can still hear his voice. Hit me again. <laughs> so that's my story. We're done.
<laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> right. So, Adam, this is a service. You're going to have to move. So, uh, this is a survey. If you take your QR code on your phone and you want to hit that, if you can fill out a survey uh, on, about spare stuff. Now, you can do terrible, too long, right. bad, bad jokes. Yep. Everything. Dad jokes, all that stuff. Really bad. So, um, uh, anyway, hey, praise the Lord, huh? Thank you all for coming.